Morning Joe is not happy about the Democrats' new tax plan. So now the reason might surprise you. New York Times recently put out a report that outlined the plan to raise two point trillion dollars uh, from uh, wealthy individuals. Now that proposal includes increases on taxes on income over four hundred fifty thousand dollars or four hundred thousand dollars for unmarried individuals. Raise that to about thirty nine, almost forty percent. Uh, the top capital, uh, capital gains rate would rise to about 25%, so it'd go up from about 5%, 25 from 20, add a 3% surtax to incomes over $5 million. Uh, also changes the amount of money that you can shield. The state taxes, it would go down back to $12 million. Uh, currently, it's at $24 million as a result of Trump's tax cuts. Uh, it would also raise money from uh, pass-through entities, uh, those changes, including the extension of an existing 3.8% surtax to include pass-through income, would raise taxes primarily on high earners and generate several hundred billion dollars in revenues, according to uh, Democratic estimates. Uh, and it, all in total, the Joint Committee estimated on Monday that the changes were to, would raise about $1 trillion from high-income individuals, the rest coming from other things. So now... There's some gaps. Obviously, th there's a problem with raising only $1 trillion of that 2.1 from wealthy Americans. It should all be coming from wealthy Americans. Uh, and so now, for example, uh, one of the things missing is a wealth tax. Wealth tax, incredibly popular, right? Not in there. Uh, they're not closing the carrot interest loophole which costs government $63 billion a year in lost revenue. There's no real aggressive uh, inheritance taxes, thanks to, of course, a Democrat, uh, you know, Richard Neal, uh, head of the Ways and Means Committee, who shot it down. So it leaves out a lot of potential revenue from the super rich. So you got your Jeff Bezos and your Elon Musk and your Bill Gates, incredibly rich individuals that are barely going to be touched by this. So those are problems. Uh, now, Morning Joe had a very interesting take on this, uh, and, and, and he's mad. Take a look. I, I don't understand what's going on when you have the people writing the tax bill for the Democrats saying they're concerned about moderates' concerns. What, do they want Jeff Bezos and Amazon to keep paying zero dollars? Is that a moderate concern, or is that actually a lobbyist's concern, because over the past few years, there are corporations that have paid zero taxes in a year, uh, and, and just over the past couple of years, that includes Amazon, Chevron, Avis, Delta, Eli Lilly, GM, Goodyear, Halliburton, Honey, oh Honeywell, IBM, Netflix, Occidental Petroleum, Owens Corning, Salesforce, US Steel, last year, Archer Daniels, FedEx, Nike, on and on and on. Are, are moderates really concerned that those corporations may actually have to pay millions of dollars in tax? Because right now they're paying zero. <laughs> and billionaires are continuing to figure out how to pay little or nothing. Hedge fund titans are paying taxes at lower rates than their clerical employees. And the people who chauffeur their Bentleys, you think? That's demagoguery. You think that's popular? No, it's not. No, that's the fact. Wow. Honestly, I did not expect that from, from uh, Joe Scarborough. It makes me think, okay, what's the angle? What's the angle here? Uh, again, it, look, he's criticizing the Democrats' tax plan. But in general, he's, this is a right kind of criticism. You're right, it doesn't go far enough. You're right, it doesn't, it doesn't touch billionaires enough. Absolutely, 100%. Let me add uh, that the people who claim to be moderates here are not moderates at all. They're corporatists. So they, they work for their corporate donors in order to try to stop taxes. Again, taxing the uber wealthy in corporations is actually extremely popular with the voters. I mean, you look at the polling, uh, Pew Research summarized its own findings, by saying far more Americans continue to say that they're bothered a lot by the feeling that some corporations and wealthy people do not pay their fair share in taxes 
than by the complexity of the tax system or even the amount that they pay in taxes. Now, Republicans, they come out and they say, well, now, the problem here is we got a very complex tax system and uh, we need to reduce it to where we can write our taxes on a postcard. Yes, that's it. That'll fix the system. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. And most of the American people are saying, no, 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 it's, it's, that's not the problem. The problem is rich people aren't paying enough. We're paying more than rich people, and that's fucked up. Like, we don't like that. Uh, in fact, the New York Times also concluded, a wide range of polls now show broad public support for tax increases on high earners. The New York Magazine headline stated, Biden's tax hike on the wealthy is incredibly popular. Axios reported the top pollster for Joe Biden's presidential campaign advises the White House to do something that often makes Democrats nervous. Talk loudly and proudly about raising taxes in the rich. So I may have found the angle. We'll get to that. So now the reason, of course, uh, that we should raise taxes in the rich is to reduce income inequality. Look, when you have a society that, where a small number of, group, of people control a vast amount of wealth, well, that's not good for a country, it's not good for an economy, it's not good for the people. Uh, in fact, everybody else gets poorer while the rich get richer. That's what's been happening in this country for a very, very long time, uh, and that is a trend that we need to reverse. Now, if the vast majority of, the working, uh, of working people when they have a major share of the wealth, turns out that everybody tends to do better. And yes, even though the top 1% isn't quite as rich as it was, they still end up being fairly rich. Weird how that works, right? But yet, yeah, Scarborough, so now Scarborough, he's, he's going to move on to talking about wealth redistribution, which I think is Another interesting uh, perspective. Listen to me here, because everybody hates income redistribution. That makes you a socialist, doesn't it? If you're for a scheme that, that redistributes wealth. Well, let me tell you something. In the world we've lived in over the past 40 years, there's been the largest income redistribution scam in American history. And it's been the middle class that's been looted while trillions keep flowing into the bank accounts of billionaires. This whole income redistribution thing we keep, oh, you can't raise taxes on people because that will be income redistribution. You're a socialist. Well, guess what? The very people who are saying that, the very people who are funding think tanks that'll say that, the very people that are paying lobbyists to get the message out to say that, the very people who are spending millions and millions of dollars on lawyers and lobbyists on K Street who are saying that, they're the people who have scammed you. They're the people whose monopolies continue to be untouched. They continue to be untouched all because they can buy the best lobbyists, they can buy the best lawyers, they can buy the best influencers on Capitol Hill, across Washington, D.C., and across Wall Street. Please, please, Democrats, do better than that. Oh, uh, never thought I'd say that, but the um, beast? Oh, it feels weird, man. That, uh, Look, I I'm still trying to find... I, I, think, I think I got the angle that he's playing. But it yes, great. Tax are rich. Absolutely. I, 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 can't, I can't disagree with the things that he's saying there. Uh, but here, okay. I got it. I got it. He's criticizing Democrats. I agree with the criticism, as I mentioned. But we're, we're the Republicans on this. Uh, again, both sides, understand, both sides serve the corporations and the super rich. But one side does it way more openly and way more brazenly than the other. Now, understand the Republican Party just tells poor people to pound sand. Like, go die. Like, there's a ditch. Have at it. All right, well, understand that, like, one, okay. As I said before, yes, Republicans tell people to pound sand, poor people. Democrats will do so flying a Black Lives Matter flag. So understand that that's, that's kind of where they are economically. Now, if you're talking about social issues, Democrats are way, way better than uh, Republicans. Uh, and of course, on some economic issues, for example, childcare, et cetera, 
the Democrats are actually trying to do something fantastic. Uh, and so I agree with that, right? Uh, but generally, again, nobody's really economically super progressive in this country, except for progressives in Congress. But anyway, as I said, if you're going to critique rich people paying super low taxes, then you might want to look at where this started, Ronald Reagan. And every president since, Democrats and Republicans have lowered taxes uh, for the rich, corporate taxes. And so that's not a coincidence, by the way. This is by design. The, you had two Supreme Court cases. It doesn't get brought up enough. Uh, you had Buckley Vallejo and Bilotti versus First Bank. Now, respectively, one of them said money is speech. The other said corporations are people, which means that corporations who are now people can now speak to our politicians by giving them tons and tons of money. Uh, and so following those two decisions, here comes, uh, you know, a flood of money in politics. You have got soft money, dark money. Then you've got Citizens United. Then you've got McCutcheon versus FEC. And we are awash in money from the wealthy and corporations. And it comes with one single directive. Keep our taxes low or else we cut you off. And this is not a strictly partisan problem, as I said. This is more of a systemic problem. Like I said, both parties, by and large, take money from corporations. Uh, look, uh, the Democrats are probably the biggest uh, recipient of pharmaceutical money. Although a lot of corporations, uh, companies, industries will play both sides as well. You've got well, one of the most corrupt corporate Democrats, Henry Cuellar, in the House that takes a massive amount of fossil fuel money. Uh, and so the money is everywhere. The money is everywhere. And that's the big problem here. Okay. And so, look, if you want to call out Democrats, that's totally fine. We do so all the time on the show. But don't leave out the real reasons behind the corruption. And that's the corporate donors. And that's unfortunately what Joe and MSNBC don't really talk about. They don't talk about the systemic money and uh, politics problem, okay? Uh, yes, you want to talk about the lobbyists, 100% great. Uh, that is an effect of the money, but you also got to talk about the systemic problem of money being involved at all in our politics. And again, MSNBC, CNN, no real outlet on the mainstream media ever wants to talk about this. There were two hosts that I know of that did have uh, a platform on MSNBC to talk about it. Jank Uger and uh, Dylan Radigan. Guess who no longer works at MSNBC? If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.